Get ready, because it's a 3v1 in Calgar Gym as Claremont Mudscripts Colleges plays Harden Simmons. We got an exciting neutral game for you here in San Antonio as the Cowgirls, who are ranked either number eight or number 16, depending on who you ask, take on a tough Skyak opponent in the Athenas. I am Reed Rosales, joined by Luke Terry for the first time, I'm pretty sure. I think this is the first game we've called together. And we are in for an exciting one, aren't we? Oh, absolutely, Reed. Excited to be here on the call. Second Harden Simmons action of the afternoon for myself, actually. So excited to see what should prove to be a very good matchup between these two teams. Unfortunate to have missed Trinity's season opener last night, but I think we'll still see a very similar style of basketball played from both of these teams here this afternoon. Claremont Mutt Scripps was very effective at pressing a potent Trinity offense. They lost it near the end because of Trinity's special freshman and Jamie Reedy. And with the Cowgirls coming off of a blasting of the Shriner Mountaineers, they put up 115 points and limited Shriner to just 70. It is a, another opposing opponent for the Athenas where the Cowgirls and the Tigers, they're two of the best offenses in the region, but you really need these regionally ranked wins down the line. Yeah, great opportunity for a bunch of these teams here in San Antonio in their opening weekends of play mostly to get some really good regional opportunities. Two teams that should be at the top of the regional rankings or at least featured in the regional rankings this year squaring off here this afternoon. Mary Markarian and Kiki Gonzalez square off and the Cowgirls win the tip off. Let's see what they do with their first attempt. Kaiser kicks it out to Parmer. Parmer drives it in into the paint. Parmer fights her way, but we're going to get a travel call early on here. So Athena ball. And Kaiser just trying to step through there. We're going to be calling her name a lot alongside her backcourt mate. Parmer and Kaiser are all afternoon. Saw the two of them both driving the same lane right there. Offense will certainly run through the two of them. Now the Athenas with an opportunity. Ava Gray trying to work her way around the three-point arc. Puts it up to Ishibashi. Ishibashi tries to drive it in. She puts it up and gets it in. So Athena strike first here in Calgard. And a nice strong take from Ishibashi right there. Even inside with the size that Harden Simmons presents, she was able to get that one up. Real strong take to the basket and finishes a nice play. And that one is kicked out. The three will not fall for Parmer. Athena's get the rebound and will head back to their side of the court. Gray looking for an opening. Gets it over to Resendiz. She puts it up from within the arc, but it does not fall. So Cowgirls on the attack very quickly. Kaiser has a good opportunity here. Pushes in, puts it up, but can't get it in. Very close for Kaiser. Good idea, but the Athenas will counter. Yeah, really nice take from Kaiser right there. Recognize the mismatch she had with a post player, backed it out just a little bit, drew and closed that space, and then blew right by her, just couldn't finish the layup that last time down. Looks like we'll have a foul on the court. It will be Harden Simmons' ball. And driving it in. A good pass, and those are going to be the first points for Harden Simmons. Kiki Gonzalez getting the nice dish in. So 2-2 two -two is our score, two minutes into the first quarter. And I would imagine Gonzalez plays a bit, pretty big role. A ton of guard play from Harden Simmons. They're going to handle most of the responsibility, but we've seen them already get inside, get into some passing lanes, and Gonzalez there, the benefactor of that helped defense that had to rotate over and stop. More opportunities for the Cowgirls. Kaiser cannot get her shot up. So Athena's with the counter. Ishibashi passes it over. Markarian able to handle it. Markarian will drive it in, goes through the spin cycle, kicks it out within the arc, and in and out. 
the worst kind of shot you want as a player. And Heckman's shot rimming out right there, but it looked like there was a nice open opportunity under the basket that the Athenas passed up that last time down the court. Not very frequently are they going to have opportunities in the paint without bodies around them. So we're going to need to be more cognizant and aware when that's the case and take advantage down low. Bit of an errant pass still goes the Athena's way and a foul will be drawn. So that foul on Paris Kaiser. See it on the replay there. Yeah, pretty clearly hitting Markarian across the arm there. Markarian nearly able to finish that for a bucket and a foul. Instead, she'll shoot two. Still a 2-2 game here in San Antonio, a little over three minutes down. Now 3-2 with that first make, but a lot of back and forth action for both of these sides trying to go quickly. It just hasn't resulted in points so far. And you've got to imagine one of the Athena's goal is to have their press slow down a potent Harden Simmons offense to limit it to a bit of a lower scoring affair that they maybe play better in than a high scoring shootout. But that one's dished in, working her way in, but it will not fall for Kiki Gonzalez. But a very physical player. Wanting to slow down this Harden Simmons offense. They've come into this one having played a game already, but it's a devil, different level of competition this afternoon. Obviously, they won their first one about 115 to 70. So it's going to be a different kind of test here. And so far, Claremont doing a really nice job of exactly what you said, slowing them down in transition, making them try and play half court offense. Okay, Chingler puts the Athenas up by three, and they get another chance. Markarian is open, puts it up and in. So Claremont has a touchdown and an extra point on the board now. Harden Simmons just working with the safety for now, but they'll try to put a couple more points on the board. They drive their, their way in, but it just rolls out. Unfortunate for Samantha Tatum. Ava Gray. So nice take from Tatum, driving after that cross-court skip, really attacking the defense as it was shifting towards her. Nice shot in the paint, ultimately rimming out, but something that they're going to look to continue to do, I'm sure, just attack the defense as it rotates towards them. Yeah, he kicks it out to Shingler, works its way down the three-point arc. Ava Gray takes the three, does not get it though, but Athena is able to rebound. Ishibashi puts it up and draws the foul. So good job there by the Athenas to stay on the ball and give themselves that second chance. And Gonzalez not too happy with that call. We'll see on the replay right here. Kind of reached over the top. Couldn't tell from that angle or that replay if there was actually contact there. But when those arms come down so frequently, the referee is going to go ahead and blow the whistle. But already a couple of really nice drives from Ishibashi trying to just get into the paint and t attack this Harden Simmons Cowgirls defense from the inside. So seven to two our score. Now eight to two as the first free throw falls for Ishibashi. And a two for two trip at the charity stripe. So nine to two is the score right now. Cowgirls trying to find something on offense. No points in the last three minutes. Trying to break. A pretty lengthy dry spell now. We'll see what they orchestrate here. Finelli gets it up to Madison Williams, a new face on the court for the Cowgirls. It's kicked out. Williams takes the three. William swishes the three. And just like that, it is nine to five. And Williams punches that one out. She is everywhere on the court. The freshman out of Houston, Texas, and sometimes you just need that kind of freshman energy to get everyone energized on the court. Yeah, and as that second unit comes into the game ahead of a timeout right here, I think it settled things overall for the Cowgirls. Much better rotation of the basketball on that possession. Obviously, we talked about it a little bit already. Claremont doing a nice job of getting back, not allowing Harden Simmons to run in transition, forcing them to try and play some half-court offense. That was really the first time this afternoon that we've seen Harden Simmons settle in, move the basketball. They got an open shot from it. And as they settled in in the first quarter in San Antonio, they knocked that one down to break that scoring drought. And a good way to break it because 
as we saw, or as I saw rather, in that Trinity CMS game last night, CMS was really playing well. They were in the lead for moments of that game, and it was all because of their effective defense. And right now, effectively slowing down Harden Simmons. But Harden Simmons, just when you think they can handle the seniors, the super seniors, a freshman comes out on the court once again and starts putting up threes. They're back out on the court now. We'll see what adjustments each coach made during that timeout. Head coach for CMS, Chanel Murchison, in her fourth season. Kendra Whitehead, head coach of Harden Simmons, in her ninth season. And Williams finds the ball in her hand. And that one's going to be some easy points for Mary Jo Parker. It's just kind of a look what I found play right there. Yeah, what a way to get going than just a little... 12, 10 foot jump shot right off of a turnover, but very quickly the other way for the Athenas. That time it's number five, Tanya Guy down the court, the freshman into the game for the first time. So the Athenas and their coaching staff making some adjustments here to counter the Harden Simmons changes. And Williams will draw the foul there. And some of the things that plagued the Athenas last time was turnovers. They turned over the ball quite a bit in their game against Trinity, which really ultimately cost them, giving the Tigers too many opportunities. Trying to limit it this time around. We'll see how the freshman does from the free throw line. She sinks one, 11 to eight now. You mentioned needing to limit turnovers. This is a Harden-Simmons team that put up over 100 in their first game. 65 of those points came from second chance opportunities, fast break points, and of course points off turnovers. 22 in that first game. They like to get out and run. I think we've made that clear to this point. Limiting that will be a key to this game for this Claremont side. Guy looking for someone inside. Finds her, there's a struggle for the ball. It's ditched in further. Shingler kicks it out. Driving in, putting it up. And that's going to be points for number 10, Siona Mandium. Aaron Simmons on the attack once again. Driving it in quickly. Thought about a three, but thought better of it. Finale. The three will not fall for Simonez. But Aaron Simmons with the rebound. Kicks it all the way to the other side of the court. Williams. This handles the ball, and there will be a foul. Ball just kind of slipped out of Williams' hands there. Unfortunate. Just straight through her hands. Fell directly into the hands of an Athena that was guarding her. It was Heckman that came away with the ball and got fouled immediately. I've seen the skip pass being utilized by this Cowgirls offensively, but I think that one from wing to wing doesn't shift the defense as much as you want it to. Heckman was still right there, but down the other way on a spin move, Markarian on the inside will get called for an offensive foul, even though it doesn't seem like she was intentionally trying to go through the defender. At the time it was number 50, Sako, who was established in the paint right there, does a nice job of maybe selling it a little bit, but certainly was in the space. Here we go. The Cowgirls once again. Williams with the ball. Trying to find an open Cowgirl. Gets it to Simonez. Simonez kicks out the three. Does not go in. Athena's rebound. Bray will get it over to an open Athena. And Resendiz in the paint puts it up. Draws the foul. And we'll get some change to go along with it. It's an and one. And I believe Rosindy's first points of the afternoon here. She was a pretty big factor in last night's game. You can clearly tell from the box score. She was in double digits offensively. She was also all over the glass. So early on. She's been held in check the first couple of moments of this quarter, but it seems like she's been hard at work, and Harden Simmons has been trying to check her. As Gonzalez comes back into the game, she'll have that responsibility down low. The Athena press pressing like they did against Trinity, but Harden Simmons able to get it down the court. Simonez with the three. She drains it. So 16 to 11 now. 
And now Athena is trying to counter Harden Simmons press. Very lethal in their own rights. So they get a takeaway there. It's put up, but blocked by Markarian. Rejecting Mary Jo Parker. And now Heckman running down the court with it. Heckman drives in into the paint now. Through the spin cycle, puts it up and in. So 18 to 11, a beautiful sequence for Heckman. Williams quick on the counter though. She draws the foul. Yeah, and things picking up here in San Antonio, moving very quickly again. Just a couple of moments ago, this Athena's team tried to break that press going to the middle of the court. It's a good idea, it's the right idea, exactly how you want to attack a press. Get someone in the middle. It's just that defensively, Harden Simmons was countering very, very well. Simone has putting herself in front of that position, taking the ball away. Didn't hurt the Athenas too much. As you mentioned, Markarian with a nice block, and they come down the other way. And for a second time, she throws, or we see a nice spin move in the paint that time, resulting in points instead of the offensive foul we saw a couple of possessions ago. 18 to 13 is our score. Hearn Simmons trails by five. Athena's moving it down the court effectively. Lightning quick. And lightning quick points there for Heckman. Heck of a job. Williams trying to drive it in in the paint. Puts it out for another cowgirl. Mary Jo Parker with the ball now. Gets it back to Williams. Williams find, trying to find an open cowgirl. Gets it to Parker. Parker drives in. But whistle blown on the court. And again, this Cowgirls team being forced to play in the half court. The first couple of minutes of the quarter, I think they really struggled. Athena's doing a really nice job of, of running them off the lines, forcing the ball to continue to move and swing. The Cowgirls settling in. I know they missed some open jump shots, but obviously it helps when Simonis comes into the game. She drained the first look that she took really, really cleanly. So having her out there certainly changes the dynamic of the offense, and it's going to change the way the Athenas play defensively right here. That one goes out, so 2014 is our score. Athena's driving it down. Guy goes around the arc, gets it to Markarian in the paint. Markarian thought maybe hit the shoe, but either way, it is Harden Simmons' ball, but foul on the court. It'll say with the Cowgirls. So I believe Markarian will get tagged with that one. Markarian will head back to the bench as some more subs for the Athenas come on. Marley Ragsdale, a new face. And Kiki Gonzalez will be taking a trip to the charity stripe. But you're right, Reed, that last one, it was Markarian that got called for that foul. A couple of bad things about it. Harden Simmons here in the bonus now to end the quarter, but also about 60, 70 feet from the basket. Markarian picks up already her second foul of the afternoon. And here we go once again. Really good defense from the Cowgirls on this possession right here, keeping everything in the corner. It was number four, Gray, that was trying to drive baseline, but defensively for Harden Simmons, number 20, Ellsworth, came into this game a couple moments ago. She does a nice job of just keeping everything in front of her. But now at the free throw line again, it's going to be Tanya Guy. Claremont doing a nice job in this first quarter of getting to the free throw line. Five now, I believe, six attempts here in the corner and an offensive rebound, but very quickly a travel going to be called on that one. It was number 14, Ragsdale, that came down with it, but unfortunately a very quick turnover after a second chance opportunity. Again, it's Ellsworth coming down the other way. That ball's tipped as she tried to get it to the high post where Gonzalez was. 
But Harden-Simmons will retain possession. She'll drive baseline, kick it to number three, Palmer, who gets inside and puts Gonzalez in really, really solid position in the paint just inside the free throw line. But Williams, who we've talked about a little bit, has been all over the court after coming into the game. Freshman maybe just a little bit too energetic right there, committing a foul. Again, another one a long way from the basket as Claremont is now also in the bonus. That's one thing that was a common factor in that Trinity CMS game as well. When you do press, you do tend to pick up more fouls than a team that doesn't press or plays a zone. So you usually start getting into these bonuses earlier and earlier than other teams. But the first free throw is good. Second shot does not go. So 22-17, Cowgirls trying to get a shot off before the end of the first quarter. We'll see who takes it. Five seconds on the clock. Kaiser, it's put up. Gonzalez airballs it. So it's going to be 22-17 at the end of the first quarter. Exciting matchup. We're going to take a small break on the Tiger Network. We'll be back for the second quarter. almost underway for the second quarter here in San Antonio. Athena's inbound the ball. And we'll see what the maestro herself grades us with it. Shingler gets the pass. And now Guy tries to drive it in, in the paint, kicks it out to Shingler from within the arc. She drains it. So 24-17, the score. Harden Simmons on the counterattack. Gonzalez in the paint. She picks up two points of her own. So two quick points for both sides here in the second quarter. Yeah, much quicker to start this second quarter than what we saw in the first. Shingler stepped into that long two-point shot really confidently and then back down the other way. Gonzalez, no issue with the contact that she felt down low. Finished really, really strong. Right now, Claremont with a little bit more size. Shingler coming in, playing alongside one of her backcourt, excuse me, frontcourt mates in Rosindis, who's also been impressive this afternoon. Tanya Guy extends the Athena lead, 26-19, but Harden Simmons quick to respond yet again. So now what was a defensive game has quickly become more offensive. Gray trying to get away, but fumbles the ball a little bit. Foul on the court, or not a foul on the court, rather. I believe we got a timeout. I think Coach Murchison recognizing the momentum stopped a little bit there when Gray dribbled that off her foot. Only 10 seconds, of course, to get it over that half court line. So wants to just reset her team, ensure that they keep possession right here, get it across quickly once they get the ball inbounded. But as this offense picks up, Certainly both teams who have been known to press are gonna move towards that and try and be more effective with it right here. I think one of the things to note from that first quarter, 
Claremont did a really nice job of getting to the free throw line. They only shot six of nine when they did get there. Not terrible by any means, but I know last night they left a lot of points on the board when they were shooting free throws. I think they missed six going into the fourth quarter, and they went only 10 for 17 at the line in the fourth. And I think that's a way that you can really kind of let games get away from you. If you're gonna get to the line, you gotta take advantage of those opportunities. There's a reason why some of the best teams in the nation are really good at seizing those opportunities at the charity stripe. We'll see what the Athenas do here as Verzendis will inbound it for the Athenas. Officials having conversation with each other. Or rather, Verzendis will not be inbounding it. Instead, they go with Gray. They trade places. So Gray gets it to Verzendis. Rezendi's looking for an open teammate. Gets it to Guy. Guy to Gray. Harden Simmons bench up in arms when the shot clock hit 20 seconds. The referees not aware of it. Kind of stopped play after the fact. It was all the way down to 17 seconds on the shot clock before they stopped it and give possession back to Harden Simmons. Harden Simmons. Kaiser drives it in, kicks it out. The three goes in for number three, Paris Palmer. The Paris to Paris connection as it's 26-24 now. CMS's lead is slowly slipping away from them. Ishibashi tries to back her way near the three-point arc, finds a lane, puts it up from within the arc. Can't get it to fall, but Athena's rebound thanks to Guy. Guy works her way around the three-point arc. And on both sides, as Harden Simmons settles into this game, they look better and better. Looks like there was a little bit of a stumble right there. No foul is going to be called on the contact against Guy right there. The referee is going to say she dribbled it off herself. See the replay. It looked like Kaiser reached in, knocked that ball off of Guy. But again, no foul called there. And Harden Simmons making Claremont work really hard here the last couple of possessions. And offensively, they've really settled into things. Kaiser. Cargos are within the arc. But a three second call will give it over to the Athena. So, mistake by Harden Simmons. Gray. Gets the inbound pass. Gets it over to Ishibashi, who finds herself with a lot of room to move up the court. Ishibashi trying to find an open Athena. Gets it to Markarian. Markarian drives it in, but kicks it back out to Resendiz. And that pass is intercepted by the Cowgirls. They are running it down. It's put up, but nothing to do there. Good defense by the Athenas and Resendiz. And Harden Timmons up in arms over that one. Resendiz puts it up. Can't get it in. Gonzalez with the rebound. And the Cowgirls quickly on the attack once again. Kaiser kicks it out. No three this time. From the post. Does not fall. Kaiser with the rebound, though. She draws the foul. And a lot of things happen between fouls. Very action-packed game right now. 26-24 with some free throws coming up for Kaiser. Yeah, and the defensive intensity for Harden Simmons is starting to translate on the other end just a little bit. Kaiser in a similar position that we saw at the very beginning of the game, getting inside. There's a travel called earlier, but the contact from Resendiz down low on this one just enough to call the fell as Kaiser was going up in the shooting motion. You see it right there, closes the space. All that contact coming down low, that's what the referees call right there. Pretty clean up top, but just gotta give her space to leave the ground. She didn't have it there. One for one was Kaiser's trip to the free throw line, but another trip to the charity stripe. This one will be Ishibashi. So once again, we are seeing a lot of trips to the free throw line here in the first half of the second quarter. Yeah, 
think it'll certainly continue considering the intensity that the Cowgirls are playing with right now. Choosing to play these guards really far outside the three-point line, five, six feet beyond it, making their jobs really, really tough. But obviously, if you can get going, get a little bit of an edge and put your defender on your hip, which the Athenas have had some success doing, referees are inclined to, to give you the foul call. And that's happened a lot here in the first half. So we've seen some moments where Arden Simmons has stayed in front completely doing a nice job of moving laterally. And we've seen some moments where they've gotten beat and been on the hip of the offensive player and ultimately been called for fouls. Cowgirl is trying to respond for the successful trip that Ishibashi had, but unfortunately, that one just passed out of bounds. No Cowgirl to handle that one. So Resendiz will inbound it over to Gray. Gray cross court. And Mandium. Loses the ball, but regains her own fumble. Markarian drives it in, gets it over to the other side. Resendiz puts it up, can't put it in, and a pile up under the net. Make sure everyone's okay. Yeah, a lot of bodies in the paint on that one. Resendiz attacking really hard, going straight at Gonzalez. It looks like from that angle, Gonzalez was outside the restricted area. Clearly can't see it on the court, but she was far enough towards that lane line. She'll have to come out of the game now. We hope she's okay. But the Cowgirls trying to pull their way closer for the tie. It does not fall, but Cowgirls able to rebound. They drive it in. Canelli kicks it out, but it doesn't fall. Another rebound for the Cowgirls, and you can't give a team that many rebounds because they are bound to score. And that one, thanks to, to Paris Palmer's quick acting there. And Palmer, one of the most experienced players on this Harden Simmons side. I believe the fifth year has played 97 games in her career for Harden Simmons. And it's kind of showing in the way she's being utilized right now. They stuck her at the high post, feeding the ball into her, and then she's made some nice reads, kicked the ball out to the three-point line. It's created some open shots. Not necessarily translating to a lot of makes at this point, but she extended that possession not once but twice with a couple, couple of offensive boards. And the shot from Markarian. Time. Mandiam looked like she was trying to set a screen as Markarian was coming off of it to sh take that shot from the short corner. Instead, it was a foul called against Harden Simmons. I believe Tatum that was down there in the area. And the Athena's working it up the three point arc. Guy gets it over to Markarian. Markarian thinks about going through, but instead dishes it in, but foul is called. So that was put onto number 12, Savannah Bennett, who is a new face on the court for Harden Simmons, the freshman out of Argyle, Texas. Guy passes it down, but it works its way back up. Mandium puts one up from within the arc, can't get it to fall, and Cowgirls will quickly counter this one as they move very fast. It's put up, and it is absolutely swished by Samantha Tatum. 29-28, so Harden Simmons gains the lead over the Athenas, but the Athenas want it back. And a travel call will let the Cowgirls keep their lead for now. And pretty slow developing on that one right there. Shingler catching that in the paint. I don't think she had actually taken a step. All the Claremont coaches were up in arms. They didn't think that was a travel. Kind of have the tendency to agree with them, but Harden Simmons making some defensive changes. That last full possession out of them defensively, they went to the 2-3. Claremont has only taken one three-point shot here this afternoon. 
Cowgirls certainly want to see them take some more from the outside, considering the way that they've gotten into the paint so far. Guy at the front of the three-point arc, signaling everyone around. Markarian pushes in. I believe they do call a charge there. So cowgirl ball, another missed opportunity for the Athenas. See that pretty clear and obvious use of the off arm from Markarian right there. And with that, it's her third foul already here on the game. Second offensive foul of the afternoon. And very quickly, Harden Simmons gets a shot up on the other end. Tatum's gotten into that area a couple times. Hit her last one from that range, but a little strong there. Put up for Guy. Guy who I believe indeed draws the foul there. So 28-29, Harden Simmons leading right now. But Guy with the chance to tie and potentially retake the lead for the Athenas. One for two. Now two for three tonight. So it is 29-29. We're all tied up once again. Next shot from Guy. Does not go, but the Athena's rebound. Kicking it back out to Guy. Guy driving it in, puts it up, but it does not fall. Cowgirls on the counterattack now. Getting harassed by the Athena's guy falls over, but Athena's able to come up with the ball. Heckman does some fancy steps, but cannot get it to go. Cowgirls, good passing, and that's going to be two points for Mary Jo Parker. It's 29-31, Harden Simmons takes the lead back. Guy gets it over to Heckman. Heckman passes it down to Ragsdale. Ragsdale, her pass, just a bit too errant. So Cowgirls will have a chance to extend their lead further. Yeah, Mary, Bo Mary Jo Parker has come into this game. Obviously mentioned when the, she hit that little jump shot. Been a factor of a steal in the press. Gets going in transition again right there. Nice contribution so far here this afternoon. And then on the other side for Claremont, they've gotten into the paint the last couple down last couple of times down the court, excuse me. But once they've gotten there, they've struggled a little bit with finishing the decision-making, obviously. Stepping out of bounds that last time down. They're in good positions, threatening positions on the court. They just have to start finishing plays again. And another bucket for the Cowgirls. Extends their lead to four, 33-29. And they almost lose, take the ball away from the Athenas, but Guy will drive it down the court. Kicks it up for Mandium. Mandium from the paint gets it to go. So 31 to 33. But Cowgirls quickly drive down the court again from downtown. And Samantha Tatum extends the Cowgirl lead from a shot that was well beyond the arc. And with that, Tatum leads to that moving score or leading score role for the Cowgirls so far. Nine shots, nine points for her. It was their first make from three. She's got into the paint a couple of times already, tossed some in from there. But if she can get going from the outside, she's been a big threat already. And the three attempt from the close side of the arc. Does not fall for number 20, Kylie Ellsworth. Athena is trying to counter. They're down by five. Gray gives it to Shingler. Shingler down to Guy. Guy serving. Passes it down to Ragsdale. Ragsdale drives it in the paint, but it bounces off the rim. So 31-36 is still our score. And a shot from Parker. Bangs off the rim. So no scoring changes right now. Ishibashi has an open lane. but some good defense by Simonez. That one ends up out of bounds. 
That last shot attempt for the Athenas. Another one off that underside of the rim. Looks like she could have stepped through an additional step, gotten to the other side of the rim and used the glass. Again, in threatening positions, just the decision making, the shot selection, not exactly where it needs to be at this point. Just one or two steps away from being really, really successful. A really nice pass over the top. Beats the defense and puts him in a great spot. Easy layup right there that time for Ragsdale. 36 seconds left in this first half. Simonez gets it to Gonzalez. Gonzalez puts it up and puts it in. 38 to 33. Had the breath knocked out of her, but that has not stopped her at all. No shot clock now. So Athena can take the last shot if they wish. It looks like they are slowing down the pace of play. Gray had a buzzer beater shot against Trinity to end the first half in that game. We'll see if she does the same here. Four seconds. Gray ba behind the back pass. It was a nice pass, but the shot from Guy did not fall. So no buzzer beaters this time for Claremont. The score at the end of the first half is Harden Simmons 38, Claremont Mudscripts 33. And Luke, we've had an exciting half of basketball, haven't we? Absolutely. Claremont getting off to a really nice start here in San Antonio. Not phased by what has been a perennial power in the region in Hardin-Simmons. Hardin-Simmons, though, playing just their second game of the season. A much more respectable opponent, I would say, so far in Claremont Mud Scripps. Took them a couple of minutes to settle into this game, but now their press is really working in the way I think they want it to. That turnover number at the bottom of your screen is really what you have to circle. 13 turnovers for Claremont Mud Scripps in the half. It's been a huge difference so far. Harden Simmons with just a five point lead and they've, they've definitely benefited from the points that they've scored because of their press. Turnovers plaguing the Athenas in that game against Trinity as well. And for Athena and Cowgirl fans alike, we will give you some updates because these are not the only teams playing right now. Some of them out in the playoffs. Athena fans up in Cambridge, Massachusetts against the host institution, MIT. Claremont Mudscripts rolled them in the first set, 25 to 13. And in set two, they're up 16 to 10. They're looking to go back home where the Division Three Volleyball Championships, that group of eight, up to the championship, will be held in Claremont in their gym. So to get to go back home and potentially win a championship in their home gym, that's got to be special. A lot of good volleyball has been played in Claremont, California the last couple of years. And it'll certainly be nice to be on your home court, potentially competing for a national championship, especially considering what we've heard regarding kind of the atmosphere there. They have a lot of support behind them. So having that is certainly an advantage, something that Trinity maybe learned a hard way last year playing in the national championship match themselves. Meanwhile, up in Newport News, Virginia, Cal Lutheran and Harden Simmons women's soccer trying to be champions of Region 10 and move on to the Elite Eight. For now, Harden Simmons is down 1-0, about 25 minutes left in the first half. So those are your updates from around the nation because the nature of the NCAA doesn't really play nice to Region 10 teams hosting a lot, does it? Not at all. I think just generally speaking, some of the tournament draws as of late have been less than favorable. It's not just a matter of whether or not you didn't get to host even though you were deserving. It goes a little bit deeper than that. It's a little bit more of a of a degrading outcome from the NCAA for some division or region 10 schools as of late. We will see you in about 12 minutes when our half break is over. Be sure to stay tuned. Cowgirls 38, Athena's 33. It's an exciting game here in San Antonio, Texas.
And we're back here in San Antonio, Texas, in Calgar Gym on the beautiful campus of Trinity University. Current score, Harden Simmons 38, Claremont Mudscripts 33, as you just saw on your screen, some of those other games going on around the nation regarding these two athletic programs. And Luke, what do you think is the key for Claremont to come back in this one? Well, clearly their turnovers hurt them in the first half. They committed 13, so seven more turnovers than their Hardin-Simmons opponent. And Hardin-Simmons took advantage of it, like we talked about. Hardin-Simmons in that first half scored 12 points off of turnovers. So that's more than twice what the difference has been so far here in this one. It was a huge Achilles heel for the Athenas last night in their game against Trinity. I think you said, Reed, they committed 30 turnovers in that affair. Certainly going to be something they need to focus on all year. And if they can clean it up here in the second half, they might have a chance to get back in this one. The same starting five for both sides as Gonzalez. Can't get that one to fall, so... Rezendi's with the rebound. Ava Gray drives it down the court. No big press from Harden Simmons yet. They allow themselves to get set on the other side. Rezendi's in the paint, goes out of it, puts up a shot off the rim. So Cowgirls take it back down the other side. A lot of court space, good pass, but it gets intercepted. Trying to find Kaiser, but an Athena there to take it away. Markarian hanging out by the three point arc, gets it to Rezendi's who kicks it back out to Gray. Gray back to Rezendiz. Rezendiz looking for an opening. He goes off of a cowgirl and gets picked up by Parmer. Parmer gets it to Kaiser. Kaiser drives it in, and Kaiser drops the ball. Kaiser may be wanting some sort of foul there, but nothing going for the officials there, so Athena ball once again. Gray is going to bring it back down for Claremont. Really all afternoon, she's done a wonderful job of just settling this offense. But that last time down, as they were trying to get into their set, it was Rezindis who maybe forced a pass just a little bit. Just too much traffic in the paint. Again, Harden Simmons doing a great job as we see there again. That's Tatum, who's been all over the court on both sides, really, who comes in to deflect that one out of bounds. These passes, these entry passes specifically, maybe just a little bit too lofty, a little bit too much hang time into allowing these help defenders to come over and disrupt things. A quick shot with the shot clock running out. It hits the backboard and correctly called a shot clock violation because that one did not hit the rim. Yeah, it didn't hit the rim, and I think it just snuck between the wickets of one of these cowgirls. Went right between the legs, was never picked up, so at that point, possession never changed. Cowgirls working it in, get it to Gonzalez, and Gonzalez gets it in, so Hart Simmons breaks 40, it is 40 to 33, and a nice pass to Gonzalez. Yeah, and they've gone to her already to start the second half a couple times, that one Slightly better touch, playing just right in front of the rim, puts it off the backboard. First one was a little bit too strong. That one hung up there for a while, but ultimately it fell. Markarian puts one up. Can't get it to go, so Cowgirls rebound. Kaiser driving it down. Kaiser drives it in, kicks it back out. The three from Parmer does not fall. Athena rebound, Ishibashi. Takes it down the court now for Claremont Mud Scripts. Start this second half. Claremont kind of playing right into what Harden Simmons wants to see out of them, I think. They've settled for a couple of jump shots, tried to force things maybe a too hard inside with the pass. Need some dribble penetration, and that's exactly what Gray's trying to do right now. Gray trying to find an opening. Three seconds on the shot clock. Puts it up. It's off the rim. And there's going to be some uh, contestant from uh, the CMS bench as I think that one hit off the rim before the shot clock hit zero. Yeah, and one of the referees on that far sideline came in to have a discussion. But the referee that called it, whatever the call happened to be, was just convinced of it. I think from up here it looked pretty clear that that one hit the rim. 
before the shot clock. You'll see the light flash here in San Antonio. I think you should at least. I'm not sure exactly what happened, but it seemed pretty clear that that one was off before the buzzer sounded and clearly hit the rim. Gray trying to shake off that last possess offensive possession. Shingler gets it up to Guy. Tanya Guy drives it in, puts it up, and puts it in. So 40-35 thanks to Tanya Guy with a good drive into the paint. Yeah, and they're just coming across the face of the defense right there. Caught it on the opposite wing, came across the top of the key, and then down that opposite free throw line, lane line, got all the way to the basket. But Palmer, a couple of times already this afternoon, we've seen her just stick that pivot foot in the ground and just work until she can get herself in a position where she's on balance enough to get a shot up. Ishibashi gets fouled on the drive into the paint. 42-35 the score after that Paris Kaiser layup. Ishibashi will get a trip to the charity strike. She's perfect tonight, four for four. We'll see if she can continue her perfect night. Two shots, Kayla Ishibashi. Two shots. Falling down to the court a bit hard. Good to see that she's shaking it off. Drains a free throw. So 42-36 now. Claremont down by six. I think Claremont did a really nice job in that first half outside of the turnovers they committed. They got inside, attacked the basket, drew some fouls, were in dangerous positions to take some shots in the paint, but maybe could have taken just slightly better shots if they had held on to the ball a little bit longer, right? Underneath the rim, maybe a little bit too much. That last play, nice, really, really nice drive, excuse me, from Ishibashi, getting back into the paint, doing all the things that they did well in the first half. I think that's, outside of the turnovers, the other thing that needs to continue for the Athenas. Athenas with another offensive possession. Markarian trying to find someone inside. Gets it to Guy. Guy works up the three-point arc. Gets it to Markarian in the paint. Shingler from within the arc. Puts it in. So 42-38, the Athenas picking up some steam perhaps. Kaiser drives it in and will draw the foul. So 42-38 and Kaiser will get a trip to the free throw line. And that last offensive possession for Claremont. Saw Markarian catch it on the roll, electing for maybe a second time this afternoon not to attack the basket, instead kicking it out to her teammate Shingler who stepped into what was another long two, but a second attempt, a second make with a lot of confidence. But back down this way, as Kaiser attacked the basket, it was Markarian who was stepping up in help, but she kind of kept her hands down. Again, committed three fouls in the first half, so she's in a little bit of trouble. Definitely cognizant of that. Doesn't want to get called for a fourth one here in the third quarter. Kaiser... Makes the score 44-38 as she drains both of her free throws. Resendiz will take the inbounds pass, gets it to Guy. Resendiz and open court for Mandium. Mandium lets the Athenas get set on offense. And Gray trying to orchestrate another good offensive possession. Gets it to Resendiz. Resendiz trying to drive it in, gets in the paint, puts it up, can't get it. Picks up her mistake, but the second shot is no good as well. And Kaiser going in. And Kaiser draws another foul, so more free throws for Paris Kaiser. And she got Shingler just behind her as she got right underneath the basket. we we'll have to see if there's a replay of this one. Shingler was right behind her, tried to get that ball from over the top, but ultimately got called for the foul. It looked based on that angle, like everything was clean up top, but unsure, maybe the referees thought they saw something underneath, some legs tangled up perhaps. We have a media timeout as we hit the five minute mark. We'll take a look at some of the scores for other games around the nation. CMS Athena's 
women's volleyball, a 14 to 10 on the host MIT up in Cambridge, Massachusetts. They had to go three time zones away from their home in Claremont to play in this regional. They're up two sets to nothing, just 11 points away from going back home and getting to compete for a national title. And where else would you want to be but home? As for the Cowgirls women's soccer, they are still down 1-0 up in Newport News against Cal Lutheran. Second half about to kick off there. This is a CMS women's basketball team that was that is predicted to finish third in the Skyac. The Skyac tough conference over there in that LA area. But they're looking to play some good quality competition here in Texas. And, you know, we talked to Coach Murchison. Very excited to be here and get to play these two quality Region 10 teams. Yeah, and certainly a younger head coach still. I believe, what, her third year at the helm of this Claremont squad. So really impressive to see how highly regarded this team is. Again, third in the preseason rankings of what is a very competitive conference. Conference where we saw, obviously, in the first round of the NCAA tournament, a Redlands team travel to San Antonio and play this Harden-Simmons team last year. Harden-Simmons advancing through to the second round where they fell to the Trinity Tigers, who have been the team to beat in Region 10 the last several years. Rosendi's shot doesn't fall. Kaiser will take the Cowgirls down the court again. She extended the lead to 46 to 38. The shot bounces off the inner part of the rim. Kaiser with the rebound. Kaiser has been everywhere for the Cowgirls as of late. Williams, the freshman, drives it in, tries to do a fancy pass. Sacco able to pick it up. And the three from Kaiser off the front of the rim that time. Another Cowgirl rebound. Kaiser will just take another three. Can't get it there. Athena's finally get the ball back. And they drive it down, just Kaiser to beat. And that one will go in. Good job from Siona Mandium. Mandium kind of taking off awkwardly. Not really the stereotypical launch that you see on that layup on the left side, but a nice job, great touch, just getting that one off the glass, putting it exactly where she needed to to see it fall. They make it 48-40, Cowgirls are able to respond. Gray gets it to the other side of the court to Guy as the Harden Simmons press in full effect now. Guy gets it into Resendiz, driving it in the paint and draws the foul. She'll get two chances from the free throw line. So 48-40. But at the rate things are going, the Athenas are really going to need some stops on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, they need some stops and they need some help to come from other areas. Zindy's at the free throw line right now, kind of exactly who you would like to see step up as this game kind of comes down the stretch, the fourth quarter nears. She knocks down that first free throw. Talked about her early on. She had a huge impact on the game last night. I think she had six made shots. It's been a rough go of it so far here against Harden Set. Harden Simmons just one for seven on the afternoon to this point. Needs to see some more shots fall and with greater efficiency, certainly. Goes two for two from the charity stripe. And a fortunate call for the Athenas. They're going to get the ball back. Sako, who caught it in transition. I think she kind of had that baseline open to her, but then it was Rosindis who... See the lean right there. Got maybe the benefit of the doubt from the referee. A really close call, but Claremont will take it right now. And Athena is driving it through. And it's put up for Resendiz. And Resendiz sinks a three in the paint on the post. She gets it anywhere. Just like that, called her number, she delivers, makes this one a three-point game, and the intensity starting to pick up in San Antonio. And it looks like Williams will draw the foul there. So a chance to extend the cowgirl lead from the free throw line. 
I don't know who had the ball originally for Harden Simmons right there, but as they were getting to the top of the key, Williams recognizing a hole in the defense. Nice little bounce pass right there. She's in an incredibly dangerous spot. Coming over, I think it was Guy that committed the foul right there. Excuse me, Mandium who committed the foul on that one. But again, a great job finding that little soft spot in the defense. Williams just made herself available to Ellsworth. Nice little hookup between senior and freshman right there. Guy will try to respond as Harden Simmons got that trip to the charity stripe. Guy looking for an opening. Gets it over to Mandium. Mandium driving it in. Takes the ankles of Simonez, but unable to get the shot to fall. But great job by Guy to get the rebound and draw the foul. Yeah, that one kind of being tipped up in the air a little bit right there. A loose ball that both teams were scrambling for, but Simona is going to get called on that reach right there. I think it was. <laughs> See her a little bit of a skip right there. Frustration with the referee, but seems like the contact was there. It's just unfortunate for Harden Simmons that on that loose ball, it's going to send Claremont to the strike now that they're in the bonus. And swishes the first shot is Tanya Guy. So 50 to 46. Now 50 to 47. So just a one possession game for the Athenas. We'll see how the Cowgirls handled this next offensive possession because this one seems to be very, very important for momentum purposes. You look at the box, Claremont now winning this third quarter, 14 to 12, but Williams has made a huge impact all day and she hits a huge three right there to swing the advantage in the quarter back to the Cowgirls. Gray orchestrating the offense right now, trying to find an opening, getting harassed by the Harden-Simmons defense, Lose, nearly losing the ball. And it's going to be a foul. I'm not sure what that was from. That was number 20, Kelly Ellsworth, doing a little shimmy at the ref. Yeah, I think frustrated. She thought that Gray was trying to sell it a little bit right here with, I think, maybe that. There was certainly contact between the upper bodies. Gray can only laugh about it herself as she heads to the free throw line, knocks down the first one. But on this possession right here, it looked like Gray was just a little bit too dead set trying to go right. Ellsworth was clearly cognizant of it, stayed in front of her, even with the screen, just hedged that direction, gave herself the advantage as much as possible. Ellsworth with the ball for now. She gets it to Williams. Williams trying to dish it into the paint. And the ball stays with the Cowgirls. It's back up to Ellsworth. Ellsworth from the paint, puts it in. So 55-49, Harden Simmons maintaining a nice cushion over the Athenas for now. The Athenas are in the bonus, so Cowgirls gotta be careful. Ishibashi fumbles the ball, gets it over to Gray. Gray driving it in, puts up a shot, but can't get it to fall. A tough one moving forward like that. Williams just takes it herself. And she's going to draw the foul and get an and one. And she, she had some defenders streaking back with her, but she just accelerated in transition. Ishibashi was trying to get back and establish herself in front of her, but Williams just a little bit too quick, applied that pressure too quickly. Ishibashi not in legal garden position. Great job from Williams to just finish that playoff, get that ball up off the glass, give herself an opportunity for three. Five for six on the night. Make it six for seven for Williams as the Cowgirls have a nine-point lead now. 40 seconds left in the third quarter. Resendiz will draw a foul and take a trip to the free throw line. And both 
both ways. There's a lot of action out of this Harden Simmons team. Defensively, they're getting a little bit too aggressive from that angle. Not sure who the foul was called on. Sacco and Ellsworth both in the area. Ellsworth coming in from behind, but it didn't look like she she made any contact as that first one is just a little bit short from Rosindis. Looks like that foul was tagged onto Williams. I think the first year got a little contact with the hand when she reached in to swipe the ball. Speaking of Williams, she gets the ball back for the Cowgirls after the missed free throw. Sacco takes it from the free throw line, but can't get it to fall. And it's on the ground. It's gonna be a jump ball. Jump ball, jump ball, jump ball. And it will be the Athena's ball. Jump ball, in quotes, we don't actually jump for it at the college level. Don't know why we still call it that, but. <laughs> You're asking the really important questions here, Reed. Guy trying to get some points before the end of this third quarter. No more shot clock. Ishibashi gives it to Shingler. Shingler up to Guy. Seven seconds on the clock. Guy runs it in and gets it in. Three seconds left. And uh, the Cowgirls, maybe some miscommunication, couldn't decide who was going to take the inbound. So it's going to be the end of the third quarter, 58 to 51. Harden Simmons leading, but Claremont Muscrip certainly picking up some steam on the offensive side of the ball. Yeah, and certainly how you want to end the quarter. Harden Simmons. Just barely edging out Claremont Mud Scripps in that one, 20 to 18. So they grow their advantage just a bit heading into the fourth. But it was a great take by Guy to end the third quarter. Obviously, not enough time for Harden Timmons to respond. It was a great crossover, got her defender kind of just to commit her weight one direction, and she used it effectively. Got into the paint, got it up off the glass. to see what the turnover numbers look like right now for Claremont Mud Scripps. 16 on the game, and if you remember at home, they had 13 at the half. So just three committed in that quarter. A significant improvement, but gonna have to continue to think about that shot selection because they're gonna need to come back from down seven points here in San Antonio if they wanna try and play some more basketball or win this one outright. Meanwhile, breaking news out of Cambridge. Congratulations to the Claremont Mutscripts Athenas for punching their ticket back into that Elite Eight category. They sweep the host MIT out of their own building. They'll head back to Claremont where they're going to get to play some championship level volleyball against some of the best teams in the nation and compete for another national title. Yeah, and you mentioned the best teams in the nation. I don't remember a tournament really in any sport that has as many of the top 10, 15 teams in the country competing at that stage. The last eight teams are going to be some of the greatest in the country, so it's certainly going to be fun to watch coming down the stretch. Athena's get a quick takeaway from the Cowgirls, exactly what they needed. Guy driving it in, goes through the spin cycle, and they're going to say a travel. So missed opportunity for Claremont. Cowgirls get the ball back. Maybe it was that pivot foot that she turned off of, kind of moving. It was unintentional, but the referee saw it anyways and called it. Kaiser beyond the arc, drives it into the paint. Kaiser puts it out to Parmer. Parmer driving in now, puts it up. And can't get it to go. So the Athena's on the attack once again. Guy will see who she goes to this time or if she tries to take it herself. We've seen both in this game. It's what makes this offense a bit unpredictable. Guy takes it herself, puts it up. Almost got it in, but it's going to be a foul drawn. And that time, Shingler coming to set a screen for Guy. And maybe just a little bit too far outside of that three-point line. 
it's just too easy for the defender to go under the screen, especially considering the lack of three-point attempts that Claremont has made this evening. Defender goes back over. It didn't matter for a guy who was committed to getting to the basket there, stepped through between a couple of defenders at the last second and was able to get that one up as she was being fouled and heads back to the free throw line. It is 58 to 53, and you want to talk about lack of taking threes. Athena's only taken four, while the Cowgirls have taken 21. So Cowgirls like to stick beyond the arc and in the arc because they've taken about 20 shots from within it as well, including that one there. It doesn't fall. There's a foul. White 14, so they will call that one on Ragsdale. So HSU will inbound it, get, get it to Parmer. Now Kaiser dishes it in to Gonzalez. Gonzalez from the paint can't get it. So Guy rebounding for the Athenas. They're down by five. We'll see what number five can do. Guy. Keeping it beyond the arc, puts up a three. It's off the rim. And the Cowgirls responding with quickness. It's going to be an and one as Paris Kaiser, Johnny on the spot, gets it once again. I'm not sure who grabbed this board, but they very quickly recognized that Paris Kaiser was streaking down that far sideline, they made the wise decision to get her the basketball. I think from the catch, she had made the decision to get to the basket. And it was the right one. She had just enough of an advantage. Got there, got it off the glass, and got the foul call. I believe it was Paris Parmer, so that Paris-Paris connection coming in once again for the Cowgirls. They've certainly enjoyed it over the past couple of years. Athena's trying to claw their way back in this one. Markarian driving it in. Trying to spin around, but can't get it to go. Whistle blown on the court. So cowgirl ball anyways. But unfortunately for the Athenas, another personal foul tag to a player. I think that was on Markarian. So that's her fourth of the afternoon. And with just under eight minutes left, Coach Murchison will make the decision to take her off for the next couple of minutes. Claremont's going to need to keep things right where they are until she can get back out on the court, if not make a little bit of a dent in this eight-point Harden-Simmons lead. Resendiz trying to find someone to get it to, decides to move around, gets it to Heckman. Heckman... Can't get it. And that one will end up. Cowgirl ball. We talk personal fouls. Resendiz has three of her own. And Paris Kaiser has floated around three personal fouls since the start of this half. She's been playing really clean basketball in the second. And it's been very good for the Cowgirls because she's been a very nice contributor. Gonzalez. There will be a foul. So we'll see. Who think about Kaiser having three personal fouls and the fact that that's been the case for much of this half. You think about who she's joined by in the backcourt, though, and how much easier that makes her job. Williams has been great this afternoon. So is Ellsworth and Tatum. So is Simona, especially defensively. All four of those names have been called a number of times, and I think they've alleviated a little bit of the pressure that Kaiser has had on defense. In the last couple times down the court have allowed her to focus on just filling it up and creating a little bit more of a cushion on the scoreboard. Paris Parmer not happy with the call. Wanted a jump ball on that contestant with Resendiz. But instead she will be tagged with a personal foul. Shingler gives it over to Heckman. Heckman driving it into the paint. Can't get it. And the shot's not falling for the Athenas right now, certainly not what they want to see, but they'll get to inbound it here. 61-53, the score. 
That one makes its way up the three-point arc. Back down to Ragsdale. Over to Gray. Gray takes the three. Can't get it. But the rebound, that one put in. So good job by Ragsdale to rebound it and put it in for two. Gonzalez in the paint. Gets fouled, and she is fired up. And she's fired up. I think she's frustrated. She couldn't get that one to fall right there. It's a great move off the catch. Caught this ball immediately and saw a jab step that created Shingler, or created the advantage in front of Shingler, who played from behind, had to reach over the top. Foul was just enough to force the miss. Gonzalez makes sure that she gets the first one, trying to get both points that she would have on that layup. And you're, it's always good to see players so passionate about the game. Coach Whitehead certainly knows how to coach some really good basketball teams. That win against Redlands, their first tournament win for that program since 2006. And for a team that's been so consistently good as they've been over the past nearly half decade now, it's got to feel good to finally have that win on the board. And they're looking to go further this time preparing for those Tigers by playing good competition like this. That one in the bucket. So 63-57, Athena's able to respond. Kaiser hands it over to Gonzalez who drives it in the paint again, but can't get that one. It'll be an air ball for Gonzalez. Athena's working it down the court yet again. Gray, we'll see what the conductor does this time. She's waiting for an opening, not finding one right now. And kickball violation. And right now, Claremont running a set with both, both of those forwards, both of the big men they have in the game right now at the top of the key, kind of set up in a position to screen for Gray, who's handling the ball. But they're both kind of set where they are. It's forcing Gray to, to make the decision herself, try and push her defender, bring them into that screen. I think it would be beneficial to see either of those screeners just maybe take a step out or once Gray commits one way or another, have them step up into the defender. Gray called on the double dribble there. So cowgirl ball on that kick ball violation. Ferris Palmer doing a very exaggerated kick in frustration. Very animated are the Cowgirls. They will drive it in. It's put up, but off the front rim. But the rebound covers herself and gets the points anyways. Samantha Tatum, 65-57. Cowgirls maintain their nice cushion over the Athenas with almost five minutes left here in the fourth quarter. Guy puts it up. Can't get it to fall. Gets her own Rebound, but unfortunately loses it. See the referee under the basket, stuck his hand up to call a foul. Referee on the near sideline coming in to confer with him. Instead, it will be a jump ball. So you had a better angle there. They changed their call. From our perspective, I think that's what I would have leaned towards. We'll see it on the replay right here. There was some early contact, but it looked like it was Ragsdale in there who is in a good
six. So right now, if you're Claremont, you have to play good defense. You have to grab every board. And you have to score the basketball to get back in this game. He has to do the bunch up spread out on the inbound. Guy trying to drive it in. She goes with it. Can't get it to go, but Athena's rebound, but a great interception by Williams. The energetic freshman quick to pick that one off. Williams resets the offense for a moment, slowing the game down. She decides to take it. She's in the paint, and the pass is kept alive by the Cowgirls. Good job by Permer. There's a foul on that one. As you just mentioned, Harden Simmons in the bonus. See, maybe it was that left arm for Mandium that got her pegged with that call right there. Otherwise, it was a pretty close play. It's number 25 for the Cowgirls. Finelli, who's going to head to the line, looked like she used her off arm as well, trying to create an advantage, create that hook to get around the defender. That's obviously an illegal action, and the ball rims out on that first one. So, you know what they say, Reed. Ball never lies. Hard to tell exactly who was in the right on that one. Next shot from Finelli. Good job from Finelli there. So 66-57, and the Athenas have two players with four personal fouls on the court in Markarian and Resendiz. So they got to be careful because they certainly don't want to lose them because they are... Very big impact players. Guy to Resendiz. Resendiz puts it up, but that ball does not reach the rim. That one ends up out of bounds. And they're going to say cowgirl ball. Much to the chagrin of the Athenas and Coach Murchison. Cowgirls back down the court. Driving it in. Nice pass to Sacco, and Sacco gets the bucket. It is 68-57, 11-point lead with about four minutes to go. Things look ever bleaker for the Athenas. They need to start moving and putting points on the board if they want to launch themselves into this one again. Guy, and that's not going to help as Guy's pass cannot find Heckman. It's really been the story of the afternoon the defensive pressure at the top of the key on the ball handlers from these Harden Simmons guards has been superb. Time it was Guy that had the ball at the top of the key as Palmer gets inside, gets another easy layup in the paint. Everything's been far from easy for the Athenas so far this afternoon. They've been kept above the three point line, above the break for large sections of the shot clock. Already 15 seconds have run off, very similar to what we saw the last time down the court before they could even attempt a shot or get into a position to attempt a shot. Foul on the court, we'll see who it's on. And it looks like that foul was committed by an Athena. Tanya Guy picks up her first personal foul of the night. So nothing to her there, especially with just three minutes left to play. Picking up one, your first personal foul, not that big of a deal. But what is a big deal is that Cowgirls get a chance to extend their lead. Deep breath, the shot does not go for Paris Parmer. Certainly not the person you want to send to the free throw line. Parmer, an 80% free throw shooter on her career in 97 games played. So a bit of an anomaly to see her miss one. Next shot, doesn't find its way in either. So Gray will try and orchestrate a comeback with her Athenas. And I think we're gonna get a timeout on the court. Timeout called by Harden Simmons, according to James Hill, whose voice rang out across Calgard. He very quickly corrects himself, and everyone in attendance here in San Antonio now aware that Claremont did call that timeout. But we'll have to see what Coach Murchison elects to draw up out of this one. Certainly needs some quick points. 13-point game, 2.48 left on the clock. 
They haven't gone to the three-point shot very frequently this afternoon. We've talked about it already. Just six attempts from beyond the arc, but really in a position where they could use a couple down the stretch. I just don't know who's going to take them for you. Gray leading the team with three attempts herself, but she hasn't made one, and Guy 0 for 2 in her own right off the bench. Someone's going to need to step up here down the stretch and take control of this offense. It's been a bit of a struggle across the board. You have some players that have contributed well, but no one has really jumped off the page when you look at the stats for the Athenas. And I think the Cowgirls have done an outstanding job of shutting down Resendiz. She had a double-double in the game against Trinity tonight. Eight points, six rebounds. Could maybe get it, but she'd have to play super stellar in order to pick it up. Resendiz, her impact that she had on the Trinity game has certainly been quieted down by this Cowgirl defense. And the Cowgirls have certainly thrown a lot at her in the post. Gonzalez has been great. Sako also currently in the game has held her own, but that time Resendiz with some nice penetration gets to her strong hand on the right side and gets it up off the glass, moving with a little bit more steam. 59-70, Cowgirls shoot it out to Parker. Parker in the paint, it's back out on the three-point arc. The shot does not fall, but Cowgirls able to rebound thanks to Parker. Another three, that one doesn't fall, and that one is rebounded by the Cowgirls again. The three from Parker does not fall. So, Cowgirls get another rebound. Williams will try it. Williams can't get it. And the Cowgirls unable to rebound that one as there was a foul called. So Samantha Tatum picks up a personal foul. That was a lot of rebounds for the Cowgirls. Not what you want to see if you're the Athenas, but we'll see if they can cut the lead into single digits now. The first part of that possession seemed like the Cowgirls were trying to milk some of the shot clock. And then, as you mentioned, the offensive rebound after offensive rebound because they started shooting the three ball. Ultimately, none of them finding the bottom. And now they have possession again with just a minute 30 in an 11-point game. Another three. That one doesn't fall. And it will end up out of bounds. It'll be Athena ball. So Markarian will be the one to make the inbound pass. And a round of applause from the Harden Timmons faithful that have traveled down here. Samantha Tatum coming off the court for likely the end of her night. Of course, Harden Timmons in for football. There was a big crowd, away crowd at that one. And Guy trying to drive it in. Ishibashi now. Ishibashi drives it in, puts it up. Can't get it to go. Williams, one minute left on the clock. And it's tipped by an Athena, but Cowgirl is able to keep it in the paint. Parker, there is a foul, so Parker will head to the free throw line. Yeah, Harden Timmons coming down to San Antonio, but they fell to Trinity 20 to 6. And Trinity will advance to the next round for the second year in a row. Yeah, program that certainly made a jump year in and year out the last several seasons. Back in 2021, a first round playoff exit last year, earning a couple of rounds. It'll be the same this year, but both times out. Seen some pretty stout opponents. Mary Harden Baylor program that was really at the top of the division last year in the second round and this year in the second round. A North Central team that is considered by many as the best team in the entire country. And it looks like we will get a timeout here from Claremont. So 71 59 the score. Coach Murchison wanting to talk things over. There may be. A path for the Athenas, but it is very, very thin. I can only imagine that you can make zero mistakes on this next possession if you're the Athenas. Yeah, comebacks like these happen very, very rarely. 
Just under 50 seconds left here in the fourth quarter, a 12-point game. It would take nothing short of a miracle for Claremont to come back. But all in all, it's been a really impressive performance in a very, very tight contest all afternoon. A five-point edge in the quarter for Harden-Simmons. So they've stretched this lead just little by little all game. Claremont obviously with a great start. Pulled ahead by five after the first quarter. Harden-Simmons bounced back really strong in that second quarter. Won it by ten, but that was the largest margin, largest advantage they've had in any individual quarter. So outside of that, it's been a very, very impressive Claremont performance. And I think they really cleaned things up here in the second half. Gray trying to drive it in at the top of the key. Passes it down. Resendiz in the paint. Draws the foul. So 71-59, a chance to bring it within 10. One of the big things kind of as we close this one up, remember in our conversation with Coach Murchison, she made sure to highlight the fact that this is a team that lost its leading scorer to injury right before the year started. And I think that shows a little bit. There's a lot of unselfishness amongst this Athena squad and roster. But at a certain point, someone really needs to step up and take control of a basketball game when you're behind. And I think it just took a little bit too long for them to do so. But it's hard to make an argument that they don't have players that are capable of it. Gray impressed this afternoon. So did Resendiz. But on the other side, that's kind of exactly what you saw out of Harden Simmons. It's those players that have been here time and time again, and Kaiser and Palmer, that really made their presence felt down the stretch and had really good games after some maybe unstereotypical or you know non-traditional slow starts out of them. Timeout called by Harden Simmons, I believe specifically by Williams, as she was getting a bit harassed by the Athenas after getting the rebound off the missed free throw. Both teams will head back on the court. We're going to still have a shot clock because it's about two seconds ahead of the game clock. But we may not have it soon. The one to take the inbounds for Harden Simmons, Kaylee Ellsworth. Gets it to Williams. Back to Ellsworth. Ellsworth pushes in a bit. Hands it over to Williams. And the Cowgirls just trying to drain the clock now. Williams dancing around in the back. Gets it to Ellsworth. Seven seconds on the shot clock and a foul. So Ellsworth will head over to the free throw line. Eight seconds left. This one all but over. Just some differences of free throws maybe to change the score a little bit. But very likely the final score will be 71 to 60 or one or two points plus. The first free throw does not go. Seems like... Had a bit of missed free throws from both sides tonight. Maybe not the cleanest performance from the charity stripe. Yeah, and I think so certainly something that you'll see improve as seasons go along for this Harden Simmons team. They missed nine. I think maybe make that 10 with that last miss. On the other side, Claremont missing eight after some struggles at the line last night as well. Will come as conditioning improves and so on and so forth, but. Right here, Coach Murchison taking an opportunity early in the year to, to practice an in-game situation. Even though this one's out of hand, 11-point lead for Harden-Simmons. Seven and a half seconds left. She'll draw something up in this timeout and see if her team can execute it. And this game has certainly slowed down from an offensive perspective. Neither team has hit a shot in the last two minutes of play. It's been all free throws that have been the points added to the board. And certainly, when you're down by 11 with seven seconds left, you might as well draw something up and see if it works because already in a situation where you pretty much know it's impossible to come back from this type of deficit with just seven and a half seconds left. See if something works and then apply it in the next game. Both teams back out on the court. 
We'll see who takes the inbounds for the Athenas. It looks like it will be Resendiz to give the inbounds pass. Athena's moving. Heckman, seven seconds on the clock. And that one is going to end up out of bounds. So 3.8 seconds left. It's put in for Williams. Three seconds. And the clock runs out. No more time for the Athenas as Harden Simmons wins convincingly 71 to 60 here in Calgary Gym. A great game by the Cowgirls. Really picked it up in that third and fourth quarter. That defense really clamped down on the Athenas. They got a good enough lead, they kept it. And sometimes that's just basketball. Yeah, a little bit of a slow start this afternoon. We talked about it earlier. They've only played one game this year, and this was a different level of competition. So Claremont did a great job coming out, starting really strong. Maybe surprised the Cowgirls a little bit, but they have so much experience on this roster and with this coaching staff. They settled in in the second quarter, took that lead, and as you mentioned, it was a really, really steady second half where they just continued to improve. They grew the lead, won both the third and fourth quarters. But you mentioned talk about the fact that they were a little bit slow out of the gate. I think one of the most impressive performances here this afternoon was the true freshman, Williams. 14 points off the bench, hit a couple of really big threes, played really solid defense. I'm sure she's going to be a really important addition for this Harden-Simmons team. Kiki Gonzalez also having an impact in the paint with 13 points. And CMS may be a bit tired of getting burned by true freshmen. Jamie Reedy last night, Williams tonight but it's been a good game here in San Antonio stay tuned on the Tiger Network as Trinity women's basketball will take on California Luth Lutheran as for Hardin Simmons you can tune in tomorrow as they will play Cal Lu at 2 o'clock Central Standard Time for Claremont Mud Scripts Another loss for them. They are still looking for their first win as the Tigers enter the court along with the Regals. But be sure to come out for CMS as I believe they travel over to Texas Lutheran. Just let me confirm that real quick as they continue their stay in Texas, I'm pretty sure. Never mind, they're in, they're back in California. Pomona Pitzer at Pomona Pitzer in Vocal Gymnasium to play Vassar. So be sure to come out for the Athenas and support them in that one as well. But for Luke Terry, everyone in the control room, everyone doing stats, I'm Reed Rosales. Thank you for joining us tonight. And stay tuned for Tigers versus the Regals.